Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Lone Star Speed YouTube channel. Christmas was pretty good. I got some big items for the bed of the truck here. We're going to install them in this video. I got a Gator Retrax retractable bed cover. I have the Husky wheel liners for inside the rear wheel wells. And I got the Ronin factory box link kit for inside the bed of the truck, the tie downs. So we're going to be installing all these. I will put the times in the description if you want to skip ahead to the proper install of each item. All right guys, so we're gonna get started with the Ronin factory box link system. So when you open the box, you get a nice set of instructions, set of keys, because each one of these cleats locks on with a lock. So that's what a cleat looks like. There's four of those. And inside this box is the hardware, some literature on stuff, other products, and then the four box link plates that mount inside the bed. So let's get started. All right guys, so I put three of the four in and I came across this issue of the bolts not threading in the factory spud holes because this one is line x or Rhino line. So if you have a truck that has a bed liner in it, you might have to do this. So I have a tap and die set. It is a six by 1.0. And so we're having to run this tap through each hole just to clean it out so these don't strip this protected torques, okay? So take a look and see how I do it. All right, so you take your tap, and you wanna get it in threaded one and a half or more turns. That way you know you're starting in the right spot. So I got about four on that one. I'm just taking an electric ratchet, and I'm gonna run it in. So as you can see, there's some stuff in there. Do that for all the holes. You could take a bolt just to check it. Nice and easy, like it's supposed to be. Next step, after you do all four of those, you take your cleat and the instructions say it's easier to put the cleat in the bracket off the truck. So what you do is you make sure you turn your key at least 90 degrees out of the way. This piece flexes just a little bit like that. That's just gonna give you the clearance to drop it in. So slide the teeth in like that. And it is a very snug fit. Once you get going, you slide it up by pulling back, pull like that. And then once you're all the way in, just take two thumbs, and you hear it click in, rotate the lock back down, and you're done with the keys. And you just mount this. Like so. Oh. Get it started. So cross thread it. I think on one of those drop in bed liners or a truck that's not bed lined at all, this would be really easy. You wouldn't have to tap it out. I just wanted to show you that it could be a possibility that you're going to have to tap those holes out. So, just nice and slow. The last thing you want to do is strip these out because you'll never be able to get them out. Box links nice and tight. So that's the finished product. Nice and clean. You can see the one up there. And the other two on the other side. So that gives you some more mounting options when you're tying cargo down, other than the, the four factory ones that all the F-150s come with. Because with the roll-up bed cover, those two up front are pretty much gonna be useless now. For 2018 and up to current 
F-150 with the five and a half foot bed. This is the model number for it. All right guys, now we're moving to the retractable bed cover. It's packaged very nice. I went ahead and took all the staples out. And as you can see, it's inside foam. The rails are wrapped up in foam, not scratch. And as you can see, here's the canister. So we're gonna unbox it and we'll go from there. All right, so first step will be to pull these foam covers off, lift up. Here's hardware. Okay. So, okay. so this is how it's gonna sit, just like this. As you can tell, here's the retractable. This, this model is all aluminum. That's why I chose to go with it. It's not fiberglass, it's got this matte finish. So, there's this box of hardware. We'll get into how to assemble the rails with all these bolts and clamps and stops and drain tubes. So you orientate it with this rubber flap on the back side that goes to the cab. It's pretty obvious that it's going to pull out this way. So you just lift it in place. And all the way to the back. And as you can see right here, this rubber piece needs to stay on top of the rail. Just like that. Just double check this rubber and it's gonna shove the water off, which it looks like it will. All right, so we got the canister in the front of the bed. We unboxed the rails, the clamps, the stops, the end caps for the rails, all the hardware, the drain tubes, and the instructions. They give very good instructions, but I also found a video from Real Truck on this exact same uh, bed cover. So it's, that's what we're referencing also. So we had to take apart these clamps they come assembled, like so. One of these bolts. Do this way like that. So you have to take them apart in order to install them. So just keep track of that. We went ahead and installed these plastic spacers. They just throw it in. That's what's gonna help keep the rail aligned with the bed. So next we're gonna build one of these rails. All right, so we finished one bed rail and we're gonna install one together. These are laid out that the long side of the bed rails face the outside. So this is the driver's side, but it's flipped over. So keep that in mind as we're building this. So when this one is sitting like this, these are the stops where the, the roll will lock into, and the clamps, you have full access to the clamps, and that goes over the bed side, okay? So, first step is take six of these nylock nuts, slide them in, Like so. You're gonna need to keep one here close to the end, another one close to the end, and then just space them out. You can kind of build it loosely and slide it, but sometimes it does bind up, so we found it easier just to put them where they need to go. They're very close to where they need to go. So, next step will be to take your end cap, line it up, it's gonna fit right in on the outside of this rail. Make sure it's in tight. Take one of these short bolts, align a nut underneath. Make your finger tight, and partially tight. Now you're gonna take the other Allen key that's applied and this tiny little bitty screw, roll it back over the top, and it goes right inside this hole right here. The rail is threaded. So that's how you know that that's the back of the rail so you can determine driver's side and passenger side. And just snuggle work on this. It's just a set screw to keep this plastic piece on. Like that. Flip back over. Tighten this down. Once again, you don't want to over tighten it. Snug in a little bit. So, like on this side, you want the clips facing what looks like out. Like so. So use more of the smaller ones. Once 
Once again, leave it snug so you can slide. So you're gonna skip. As you can see, I used one for here, two for the clip. This one will be a clamp. It's gonna go like this. You're gonna use the bolt that you pulled out of it earlier. Line up with the nut. Just get it threaded so you can slide it, okay? And you just keep going. I'm gonna space them out so I don't have to worry about sliding them later. This middle stop in between the two clamps is fully adjustable. So if you know you're gonna carry something that you wanna be able to shut it 80% of the way, you can put the stop here. If you, have, if you carry big boxes all the time, you can put it farther up to the front. So this one's fully adjustable. But the back one will be pulled all the way tight so it latches at the tailgate. And the front one is what catches it from going too far into the canister. And you can adjust these at any time. You can still get to these Allen bolts. It's just easier to do it when gravity is helping you, not against you. Just like that. So once you put the rails on, put it right on the rail like this. And it's probably gonna take two people. Someone's gonna have to lift the front of the canister and you're gonna have to line up the groove inside with the rail. So now, this is the, the piece that has to slide inside the rail. And you might have to lift up on this a little bit get them to match. Ooh. Just like that. And you make sure that it's under and slides in like that. That's what it's supposed to look like on the inside. And right here is where you're gonna put the self-tapping torque screw. And it's gonna go through down here into to mate this canister in the rail. So this is the hole right here that you're gonna use this torque screw. It's gonna mate the canister with the side rail. So the rails are on, the stops and the clamps are all loose, and it's ready to be gapped. So the next step would be to shut the tailgate Shut the tailgate and use this provide spacer. And you'll slide this right here, like so, up against the tailgate and you'll pull everything forward, or everything back towards the tailgate. All right, so you take the plastic spacer with the tailgate closed, put the spacer up against the tailgate, and you're gonna slide the rail and the canister all the way back to it, to where it's snug, just like that. You still need to be able to pull the spacer out. You want to hold it right there as best as possible while you clamp the clamp to the rail. Nice and tight. Like that. That way they're held in place. And you can go ahead and snug everything down. It took a while to get these rails straight and lined up, but it helped by running it back and forth a couple times to give you a good idea if the backs needed to come in or go out or whatever they needed to do. So the operate is it locks with the tailgate lock and then right underneath on both sides right here and right here there's rubber handles just pull down and it's free to slide until the next latch so now it's latched you have to pull the cable again and it slides all the way back to the next latch that's what it looks like when it's fully open Still got about 80%, 85% of your bed. These are very, these adjustment screws are very good at jacking these in and out, so be careful when you do that. Next is drain tubes. 
All right, so the way these drain tubes work is they come with these plastic grommets. There's a hole on each end of the box. See it right there? Just go ahead and push it in. And try to do this while holding the camera. Just like that, and it's in. So for my truck that's bedlined, these grommets back here, they're plastic. So I'm just gonna drill a hole right in the middle of them, half inch hole, and run the pipe out to the outside. I'll just run this hose to the hole. All right, so there's the finished product on each side. A little tight of a fit to get the hose through the little piece there. Once it's through, it's nice and secure. All right, so I already got the driver's side liner in. This is what they look like. There are four, four holes. There's one right here, two, three, and then four. So it comes with eight of these clips and eight washer, uh, screws with washers on them. I already pre-installed two of the four to the passenger side. The instructions work very simple. Once you read them once, you'll get it. Uh, as you can see, there's one, two, and then the number three and four will go one right down there, and the other one is right in that hole right, right there. But you have to reach around the back side and hold that one in place. These two just clip on. So you take your fender liner. With these oversized tires, it's a little difficult, but it can be done. So you roll it on the front like this. And you have to kind of squeeze her in over the tire. Like that. And roll it back. Kind of wants to go where it wants to go, where it should be. Now you gotta make sure you're, you're not rolled back and forth. Once you start putting it in, it's gonna be very difficult. You start pushing it in. You gotta get this lip inside the fender flare. A lot of tugging and pulling. This front side is the hardest part. There's a long bolt. You could pull it out. You can just lift it right here. And get it right over it like that. So it's back here. So right here is the only part. There you go. I know that hole's lined up. Getting it all lined up, situated is the hard part. I'm just looking for those two clips to through these holes right here. Okay, so those are the easy two. So these down here, you need a little stubby screwdriver. I found that works the best is to take the screw, put it through the hole first, and then take the screw, put it through the hole like so, reach up behind.
Throw it on the clip. Tighten it down. There's the finished product. Gives it a nice clean look. It blocks the whole top, top of the shock there. It blocks being able to see under the bed of the truck. Which gives it a nice finished look underneath. All right, thanks for watching the install of those three products. Please like, subscribe, trying to get to a thousand subscribers. See you in the next one.